Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today we're going to build this uh, two person labyrinth game. Want to see how I do it? Stay tuned. Started using a 2x4 piece of half inch MDF and I cut that in half to create a 2x2 two two piece of half inch for the base. In combination with the triangle and a ruler, I made a center mark, found center, and then out from the center I used two and three quarter inch measurements measuring out from the middle point. Once I had those lines, I drew vertical lines and horizontal lines, again using the combination between the square and the ruler just to keep everything aligned. It's pretty important to keep these lines pretty precise. And you can see here I just made a grid on the board. These X's are used to represent where I'm going to put holes in the board for the ping pong ball to fall into later. Once I found out where I wanted the holes, I just grew, drew an X in that square so I can have a center point to line the drill bit. I don't know what size drill bit this is. I think it's one and five eighths. It's just a little bit bigger than the ping pong ball that I was using. And that's what you're looking for. Just a hole a little bit bigger than the ball that you're gonna use. And then uh, drill out these holes. You can place these holes anywhere on the board and uh, make any complex design you want. Now the center hole I had to do by hand because the depth on the drill press wasn't uh, big enough and it just missed it by about a half inch. Now the center part of this grid you want to use an awl or a nail or something to start the hole just so the brad point bit can have a place to start and give you more accurate holes. Since my drill press wouldn't get that middle hole again, I just set a flag on the drill bit so I can drill out that middle hole at the same depth. So here I'm just getting a rough layout of the perimeter frame so I can uh, cut them on the miter saw. Now I've already taken a minute to sand off most of the grid that I drew out earlier and left the outer grid line for reference for the frame. Now I'm just taking a minute to round over all the edges with the 16th inch round over bit. So with the space between the outer frame and the edge of the board, I just drew a line 6 inches from each corner and 3 inches from each corner and I put a point there to start my Forstner bit, which is a one and a half inch bit, and I drilled all 16 holes. Connected those holes with the pencil line using my square, and I did this on all four corners. I just used my jigsaw to cut on those lines to create a slot where your fingers can get in there and actually hold the board. Use a spindle sander to clean up those slots to make them nice and smooth. And I came back with that 16th inch roundover bit and smoothed out all those holes again. On the outer perimeter frame, I put 
glue on the joint and put pin nails to hold most of the frame together and then I glued the frame to the board using the outer perimeter line of the grid I drew at the beginning of the video. I don't know really how much it matters but I did take a little extra time just to make sure the frame was square. That opening part down there where my hands are, that is where the ball is going to exit out to uh, accomplish the board. So now I'm cutting uh, several little blocks for the interior walls of this labyrinth game. And I'm doing this on the miter saw and I'm using a little spacer in between the stop block. And the reason I'm doing that is because the stop block don't go all the way uh, close enough to the blade to where I needed to go. So I just cut a little spacer and set that spacer to the dimensions that I wanted on the tape measure. Then I adjust the stop block to the spacer. Now doing it this way, you have to let the blade come to a complete stop before you lift the blade up. Otherwise you, the piece of wood could actually flip up and hit you. So let the blade come to a complete stop before you actually lift the blade. So I've got many of these little interior wall blocks I need to mark center on and I know my pieces are three quarter inch thick so I set my scribe to three eighths of an inch thick and scribed a center line. Now I also need a cross line to set my uh, drill bit to and most of these pieces are three eighths inch from the edge so that'll give me a space for the drill bit of two and three quarters which is the same as my grid on the board and some of these other pieces are custom pieces where I wanted to make the board a little harder so I made them a little longer so the ball wouldn't go in between the two pieces so I have to set the scribe to a different width from the edge so I can uh, keep the same spacing between dowel rods so like on this piece it's going to be almost in the middle of this board and it won't have a dowel rod on the end on that particular end of the uh, block so once I got all my cross pieces I just highlighted them with the pencil so I know where to drill and not make any mistakes these holes do have to be fairly precise so they uh, slide into the board easier once I uh, drill the holes and add the dowel rods to now in this particular setup, it is well worth to set up a stop block, your fence, and a uh, feather board so you can make all these holes the exact same. That way there's no mistakes when you try to uh, align these holes up with the holes that's on the board itself. Um, it don't really matter where you put the holes as long as they are centered two and three quarter inches apart or the same distance that you made your grid on your board. Now if you're curious about these particular feather boards, I made these uh, a couple years ago and I'll put a link in the description below where you can see the drill press accessories that I made for this particular drill press table. Right here is one of the reasons I like these particular feather blocks with the wheels on it. Uh, when you have smaller pieces between the fence, you can actually use the wheels as a micro adjust to get the part right where you want it, or you can use it just to retrieve the pieces that's stuck in between the fence. You can use the wheel to actually roll the piece out and get the piece out so you don't have to put your hand in between the uh, where the drill bit is. These are just pre-cut quarter inch dowel rods that I'm using. They're an inch and a quarter long and I'm gluing only in the blocks themselves. So I just put glue in the hole, put the dowel rods and pound them in. On the drill press I did set a depth so about a quarter inch of the dowel rod is left over from the block. 
I just set up my palm router in a clamp and I'm rounding over all those interior wall blocks. Rounded over all edges except for the um, dowel rod side where it's actually going to meet the board. So here's all the different pieces. They're all painted. All the interior walls, they are painted different colors for their particular size. And all the dowel rods are um, glued in and everything. So the holes in the boards will accept those dowel rods that's in the blocks. And you can orientate this board however you like. It's a little custom, that way the board's not the same all the time. You can make the walls however you want. Now with the pieces, they have paint on the dowel rods and it was a little hard to get into those holes, but for the most part they went right in and then um, you just had to persuade them a little bit. So if you're going to do this, paint the pieces first and then uh, glue in the dowel rods. It will uh, go into those holes a little bit better. Either that or make the dowel rod holes in the board just a one drill bit size bigger. So I got the project done. Um, I think it turned out really good. Uh, I really like the concept that you can move the different um, pieces around to create different paths. Uh, some of these I've seen, um, they're, once, they're pretty stationary and I think once you get used to that, it, the game gets boring and um, too easy. So in this case, you can actually change it up and make a different path. The only thing you really need to know is where you're going to start the ball from and you already got the ending point which is uh, on the, this side of the board where it has a little path. So different pieces uh, do different things like the blue one uh, will trap a ball in between two pieces so you can't actually get the ball through the one piece and another. Um, the red one is a pretty standard piece. The yellow one is designed to go up against another piece, uh, just like this one. And, you know, you can make these however you want. The only thing that you really have to remember is the spacing for the, the dowel rods. In my case, all my holes are two and three quarter inches apart. So that's the spacing I put on the dowel rods increments of two and three quarters. So I would definitely put it on a drill press with a stop block or some sort of jig where you can accurately make those dowel rod holes. Uh, the board actually turned out really cool. Um, I had no intention of painting this, um, but I did want to put a sealer on there and I didn't have the sealer so I ended up painting it. So I still think it looks cool and uh, I'm pretty pleased with the with the progress or the uh, project. So I think this project could be really cool if you actually made it a lot bigger, uh, such as a four by eight sheet of plywood. It would be heavy and certainly not a, too heavy for two people to work comfortably, comfortably, comfortably. <laughs> Can't say that word. But if you put four people on that game, and all four players have to work together to tilt the board one way or the other. I think that would be really cool. Um, also, you could put two balls in there and make the game even harder. And also, while I was building this, I uh, 
thought about you know cutting out a section over here that way you have, have two exit points um, that way the two players can work against each other and try to get the ball out of their exit point and use that as a point system so I thought that might be kind of cool also I thought uh, you know a themed board maybe like a golf theme instead of a ping pong ball use a golf ball and you know make sand traps or you know uh, a lake for a water hazard or you know something like that um, you know maybe a skateboard theme uh, where you still use the ping pong ping pong ball or or whatever ball you want and then maybe make some ramps and jump over some holes or you know something like that you can really get creative with this idea I think and I would love to see other people try this idea and and come up with some some other solutions and some other uh, ways to build this but this is more of a uh, general design and uh, more or less proof of concept and I think it works out great um, I'm pretty pleased with the project and my kids played with it for about a half hour or so before they left for the weekend and uh, they seem to like it so <laughs> um, I really like the project and uh, let me know what you think in the comment below how I can improve it or how you would do it and uh, other themes for this because it's a relatively uh, inexpensive project I, I think I got you know 14 bucks in this uh, you know, as long as you had some paint or something, or, and like I said, you don't even need paint, so you can easily do this project for 10 or 15 bucks. That's all I got for you this week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to go check out my second channel, MF Woodshop 2. I've been doing some live broadcasts over there, more or less trying to get used to the uh, uh, format of the uh, live broadcast because I haven't done very many of them and once I get kind of used to it I'll put a live broadcast on this channel and maybe do a question and answer on uh, anything you know uh, past projects or future projects or you know in life in general or whatever you know uh, but I do want to do a live broadcast here soon and um, I'm just kind of practicing on the second channel so I encourage you to subscribe to my second channel and join that live broadcast. I've been trying to do them on Thursdays, um, so uh, I just kind of do them on the whim. I don't schedule them or anything like that, so you'll just kind of have to catch me. <laughs> uh, but really, that's all I got for you this week. Um, the whole month of August, all my plans on my website are 50% off. You don't have to have any promo codes or anything like that. It's already going to be marked down from August 1st to August 31st. And if you are curious about any of my plans on my website, now is a good time to do that because I am going to mark them all 50% off. And I do like to thank everybody for purchasing plans. That really helps me out in the shop here. Um, I use that money to upgrade my equipment and uh, you know saw blades and wood and materials and, and what have you so that money really helps out so don't forget to check out the website check out mf woodshop 2 and that's all i got for you this week thank you for watching and i'll see you next time not supposed to go in the hole you think so i didn't know that was there you can't see the hole well, there is wood blocking it.